Hello friends, so as promised I'm going to continue with Bible prophecy and today um, I was sitting there doing the Bible study regarding the Antichrist and there's one common objection that people have when they listen to my videos regarding Bible prophecy. They seem to really be hung up on this one thing. Why is the Antichrist likely to be Muslim why do I say he's going to be coming out from the Islamic world this is the reason why and so today I'm going to show you through the scriptures where I get this understanding from so if you like and if you are interested to know the reasons why please have your Bibles ready and I would like us to go to the books of Daniel and the books um, or the chapter in Revelation in fact, let's begin there. Revelation chapter 13, I believe. Chapter 13. And let's read from verse, let's start with verse 1. Chapter 13, Revelation. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns and on his heads a blasphemous name now the beast which i saw was like a leopard please pay attention to this part in particular now the beast which i saw was like a leopard his feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. The dragon gives the Antichrist power, a throne, and great authority. Hence, notice the ten kings that will come and join this confederation, if you like. Because the beast is like a leopard, has a feet of a bear and a mouth like a lion now where have we heard that terminology before in the bible you guys the leopard the bear and the lion because this isn't the first time this has been mentioned it let's go back now to daniel daniel chapter 7 and let us read verse 4 this is regarding a vision that Daniel was seeing. And here he's going to explain what the vision was. Daniel chapter 7 verse 4. The first was like a lion. He had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5. And suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear. You see, we're going to see the sea, the same three animals um, expressed here in the old scripture of Daniel. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads. And dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns. Now, if you cross-reference this to Revelation 13, because over there it mentions the 10 as well. And also notice what happens after this. I wasn't considering verse 8. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up from among them, before whom three out of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words 
Verse 9, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Verse 11, I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away and their lives were yet prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man, Coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Now, if you look and carry on and read in Daniel 7, he gets the interpretation Verse 15, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came, I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all of this, so he told me, made known to me the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Then I wished to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful. With its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. And the ten horns were on its head, and the other horn which came up from which three fell, namely the horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints. This same horn that is mentioned here is the little horn or the Antichrist, if you, um, because he's got many titles, you guys. And I'll, go, I'll mention those titles in a moment. Verse 22. Let me repeat that. Verse 21. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favour of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. I would like you to read the whole chapter. It's a lot of reading for me, but please read the whole chapter of Daniel 7. Also, Daniel chapter 8, because Daniel 8 gives more interpretation to what he saw in verse in chapter 7 okay now here are some of the other titles regarding the antichrist or the man of sin the man of lawlessness the son of perdition he's also called the pharaoh of egypt if we go in ezekiel um 31 i thought i was just going to go through two books of the bible today Ezekiel 31 and Ezekiel 32. Now, the Pharaoh of Egypt was the Pharaoh that you and I are familiar with regarding the times of Moses. But God is here talking in the book of Ezekiel about this other Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Chapter 31, Ezekiel. Now, um, the reason why I'm reading these scriptures out to you, friends, is I want to show you why is the Lord God highlighting nations that are today islamic now i'm not the only one who has this position regarding end times eschatology on where the antichrist is coming from there are many other good teachers out there and what i'll do i'll put links in the description box so you can go and refer to their content as well i want to show you why god is singling out islam not me I'm not going around picking out Islam from all the religions of the world to say they are the ones to watch out for. This is the threat that is the, the, the main um, 
Antichrist system. I get this understanding from the Word of God, friends. Now, chapter 31, Ezekiel. Let's read from verse 2. Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt and his multitude. Listen to these words. In fact, it's a long scripture. Please read the whole chapter. I'll read some of it. Whom are you like in your greatness? Indeed, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon with fine branches that shaded the forest. In this chapter, the Lord is going to use the language of trees and branches. Now, he is not talking about trees, literal trees, um, twigs and branches hanging off the trees. This is descriptive language to... Um, to express people, people groups and armies of nations, rulers and principalities as well. God is saying, you think you are very splendid in all your glamour and all your beauty, yet you are an accursed thing. <clears throat> Chapter 32 goes on, it's a continuation. Chapter 32 of Ezekiel, let's again start at verse 2. Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You see, this is not the same Pharaoh that was um, that Moses had to deal with in his time. This is Pharaoh, king of Egypt. This is prophecy. This is regarding a title. Because Pharaoh, even in the time of Moses, was a type of the Antichrist, you guys. So whatever took place there in history, in the past, is going to repeat itself again. Remember, Bible prophecy is repetitive. There are patterns, there are themes, there is consistency. You are like a lion among the nations, and you are like a monster in the seas, bursting forth in your rivers, troubling the waters with your feet, and fouling the rivers. Um, it also goes, this is another long chapter. If you carry on and read in chapter 32, Ezekiel, it's shocking the detail that is given here. Let's say if you consider from verses, read the whole chapter. In fact, I don't like picking out verses, you guys. Read the whole chapter. God is saying there are certain nations that are within King of Egypt, Pharaoh, King of Egypt. How is that possible? Because he is the head of a confederation of nations that have one mind, one goal with him. Therefore, God is calling out these other nations. Mentioned in these nations that he is going to go, that God is going to judge, destroy, and cast them down to the pit, these other nations. He's not talking about the whole nation. He's talking about the people in, in these nations. This is how I understand it in modern terminology. I'm going to go back to use um, the Kilafa as an example. The Kilafa is going to be a system of nations that are going to come together under the banner of Islam for specific goals. One of the main goals is, one of them, is to take Jerusalem for themselves and to make it the capital for the Kilafa. This can only happen if there is conflict between the north and the south, Iran and Saudi Arabia, when they go to attack Mecca. If, supposing Mecca is attacked by uh, Iran, and the black stone is taken from the Kaaba, remember I mentioned this before? Supposing this black stone is removed from Kaaba because it's been removed before in history. Do you remember what Dan Gibson has taught and Jay Smith? The black stone was in Petra. It was moved from there, from its um, initial location, and it was moved, relocated to Mecca, where it is now in Arabia, Saudi Arabia. I think this is going to happen again. The Giblas in the history of, us, of Islam were the whole story about the Qibla, the, the direction of prayer. I think he, he said within the first 100 years of Islam, 
I think as far as even up to 200 years, I have to make sure that fact that that's a fact. Let's say in the beginning years of Islam, the direction of prayer wasn't Mecca, it wasn't Jerusalem, it was Petra. Again, check out Dan Gibson's work on this to verify what I'm saying. So I think this history, what took place, is going to repeat itself. It's possible that the black stone can be removed again, but this time placed in Jerusalem because they've got two mosques or masjids there on the, on the Temple Mount. They've got Al-Aqsa and they've got the Dome of the Rock. And let me also remind you, the Islamic inscriptions inside the dome is very antichrist. It comes against the Father and the Son. Um, they also have an Islamic inscription that says, Far be it that God has a son, he doesn't beget, neither is he begotten. So you see, this is a very antichrist spirit. You know, we've had many antichrists in the past, in history, but there will come a time where this final antichrist, system the beast will be manifested and out there declaring itself as the one true god or it's going to be an affront to the god, um, to the lord god of heaven because remember the names on this beast is full of blasphemous names very similar to the harlot you see the pieces fit when you look at it in this perspective remember also the beast and the ten kings that join this confederation of the beast um, system, the Antichrist system, in Revelation says it will devour, um, destroy the harlot. So the Antichrist beast system and the harlot, although they might be together in some form of confederacy, they really are opposed to the harlot. They hate her and they will destroy her. God is going to allow them to destroy her. But there is a specific location that Jesus Christ is going to reserve for himself to carry out this judgment. And that location is in Petra, Bosra, Edom. I hope this is making sense to you, friends. Are you following with me? I'm going to go back to Ezekiel, read out to you the nations that are mentioned that God is going to destroy. And he's not only going to destroy, but he says... He's going to cast them into the pit because they caused their terror in the land of the living. Assyria is mentioned there. Assyria, Elam, Iran, Meshek and Tubal, which we now are in Turkey today. Edom, I don't need to re-emphasize where Edom is, do I, friends? You know that because I've said it so many times. Um, the Sidonians, Tyre, and God says down here, For I have caused my terror, says the Lord, in the land of the living, and he shall be placed in the midst of the uncircumcised. He is the Antichrist, the uh, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He shall be placed in the midst of the uncircumcised with those slain by the sword. Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord. Just to save time from reading, please read those two chapters yourself. Please promise me that you will do that, friends. Now, after this comes those chapters that I did previous videos on, Ezekiel 35 and Ezekiel 36, where God is going to narrow it down to the harlot, the mystery harlot, who I believe is in Arabia, Mount Seir, remember, which opposes Mount Zion, God is narrowing it down so we know we can eliminate the candidates and we are able to distinguish who is who. Now, when we go back to these three animals that were mentioned in the book of Revelation, now the kingdoms that they represented were the lion was Babylon, the Babylonian Empire. What landmass or land masses geographically represent Babylonia today because remember these prophecies are about the end times <laughs> the latter days the days just before the day of the Lord the end of this age 
The bear represents the Medo Persians. Where and uh, what sort of religion, system, political system, because it's a political system, Islam, then it's a religious system. What religion dominates that region today, you guys? Medo Persian Empire. The leopard represents the Greco or the Grecian Empire, which it's very similar, I say, to the 1040 window, the most hostile, most resistant to the gospel and very anti-Semitic. It's kind of, it was called the Greek, the Greek Empire, but now that region, because look at where Greece is today, what kind of authority does it have? It doesn't, you guys, it's in an economic crisis. Turkey is where we're looking at. We're looking at Turkey now, where this region is of the leopard. This Antichrist beast system, to conclude the point I'm trying to make, is going to include, let's go back, Revelation 13, verse 2. Now the beast which I saw, remember he's, John is seeing a beast of the future from his moment in time when he was seeing this it was yet to come in the future but this is regarding the very end times this final beast the fourth the beast of daniel which was more terrible than the prior ones it's going to consist of the leopard empire so it's going to cover the region where the former grecian empire was the leopard it's also going to cover the former regions of where the lion dominated, which was the Babylonian Empire. Also included in this beast antichrist empire that is coming is the bear, which is the Medo-Persian Empire. Now, the fourth beast is going to comprise of all those three kingdoms together. If you remember the image that Daniel was interpreting... They match these three here, the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, and the, uh, the Grecian Empire. Now, the only difference is was the legs, the two legs, and I believe this is where the split took place. The Roman Empire divided the Byzantians and then the Romans over there. This is where I think people are getting confused, and it's okay, it's, it's easily done. We're not right there at the very end of the end times. So as the end times start to, as we approach them, friends, we're going to be able to understand these prophetic scriptures more clearly, which is just the way prophecy is. And not only that, with prophecy, most the most common way of finding out what has been fulfilled is after the fact. When Jesus Christ fulfilled prophecy, his followers... And the ones who wrote the New Testament, the epistles, the gospels, they knew after the fact that, wow, this was fulfilled. When Jesus did this, he fulfilled this prophecy. So, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep on top of it, that we shouldn't keep watching and praying and being observant to what's happening in the Middle East right now. Because the point of this is, is that this Antichrist is coming from the Middle East. The Bible is showing us, you guys, is that direction. Let me go back and show you something. In Daniel chapter 8, Fifi, you can hear Fifi because she was just meowing just now. Remember when I said, please read Daniel chapter 8 because it gives you more information regarding the interpretation? Well, this is what I mean. Let me read it to you from verse 17. This is regarding the goat and the ram. This is yet to happen in the future. So he came near, the angel, so he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man. Understand, please, my listeners, that the vision refers to the time of the end. So many people think that this is all historic. It all happened in the past. No. Listen to Daniel and the angel. What's the angel saying? You know, let's just listen to the word of God, you guys. Makes it so much easier for us. 
Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and stood me upright. Now listen to these words. And he said, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. Again, second time he's repeating it. The latter time of the indignation. The latter. What does that mean, you guys? What's the former and the latter? Verse 20. The ram which you saw, he's given the interpretation. The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. Iran, the location of Iran and where, Kurd, where the Kurds are at the moment. And the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. Do you remember I included the leopard here, the Grecian Empire? But that word here, Greece, if you look it up in Strong's Concordance and go online on Bible Hub, it tells you the word is Yavan. Not Greece as Greece of today. Let's stick with the Bible's interpretation. Go in history and find out what, what was he talking about here. I was talking about Yavan, which is Turkey today. Turkey, not little Greece over there. <laughs> You see, when we can, see, if that was Greece, look at what's going on with Greece right now. It doesn't fit. The pieces don't fit. We can't make them fit either. It has to be perfectly fitted. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. And I think, I speculate in here. I think this first king is other one of turkey right now as for the broken horn verse 22 and the four that stood up in its place this is going to tell us where these coming from where the antichrist is going to come from i can't concentrate when fifi starts doing that as for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation but not with its power verse 23 and in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors transgressors have reached their fullness a king shall arise having fierce features who understands sinister schemes his power shall be mighty but not with his own power he shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Through his cunning he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. And he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without human means. And the vision of the evenings and the mornings, which was told, is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. Now, when we think about the first horn, the goat, the two horns of the ram, I'll read it down here. I'm sorry, Fifi. Out of those four horns, or the four kings, one more is going to come out. That one is going to have a little authority, because um, he comes in very cunningly. The little horn, he is going to come out from either one of these regions, because this, again, is referring to those regions I just read out to you. Possibly these are the nations that this is where the Antichrist is going to come from. Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan. If there is a Kurdistan, then Kurdistan is basically from the Middle East. It's a very um, tight window. The Antichrist is not coming from the USA, he's not coming from Italy, Rome, he's not coming from the UK, he's not coming from Europe, full stop. 
Why is that? Because the Bible doesn't say so, does it? After all those scriptures I just read to you, friends, where is Europe? Where is Rome? Where is Italy? It's not there, is it? You see? If we read the word of God, stick with the interpretation that is given to us there because it took an angel to come and give the interpretation. He's telling us the regions, Medo-Persia, look, he's saying over here. When we understand better the book of Daniel, then we can go back to the book of Revelation and then I go, right, okay, now it makes more sense. Now I know where to look to find out what's the development in these nations which is it's not a surprise to me that America is pulling back from that region now just sort of handing it over to them to deal with because it's all under God's will he's ultimately in charge in control he knows what's happening and he's going to allow certain leaders to fall and rise according to the biblical prophecies because everything must happen according to God's will to whatever is written in the word of God um, what else do I want to say on this I know it's a lot of information um, but it's just important to re rehash that I think one more time because is that the right word <laughs> to rehash recap <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you friends remember the religion of Islam is Baal worship Baal and Ashtoreth these are the ancient deities that were God's enemies in terms of idols um, his people, the children of Israel, were led astray and they were worshipping Baal and the Ashtoreths and Moloch. Well, these demon gods are still being worshipped today, but this time on a greater scale. It's bigger now, you see. And remember, the spirit of the Antichrist is against the Father, against the Son against the fact that the word of God became flesh, that Christ came in the flesh. Islam fits the bill, you guys. So let us um, consider these scriptures. Please read them. Read the chapters I gave you. And what I'll do is put those links in my description and hopefully you will take the time to check them out, please. Um, I will talk about this again. I also wrote down here the Shriners. I mentioned the Shriners before as well in some video um, past a few months ago. Remember the Shriners give their allegiance to Allah Muhammad for the sake of the Shrine in Mecca. So we talk about the Freemasons often, right? We hear people talk about, no, hardly anyone talk about the Shriners. And the connection between Baphomet and Mahomet, which is Muhammad, the idol that the Knights Templars were worshipping or paying homage to. That name Baphomet comes from Mahomet, which is Muhammad. Again, we don't hear many people talking about that either. This information is available, it's out there, but it's just that we have such a Western centric understanding of a Middle Eastern book. That it really throws off our eschatology, you know. Um, but I pray you would consider those scriptures again. Please read Revelation 13, Daniel 7, and Daniel 8, Ezekiel 31, Ezekiel 32. Read those scriptures, friends, and um, you tell me what conclusion you reach. I need to go to my cat because she's she's asking for me. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I don't know how long this video was because I'm using another format. Um, but let me know what you think. I love you. Thank you.